Arizona Congressman Rick Renzi was one of the most promising politicians of his generation. He was a successful businessman, a devoted father, and a devout Catholic who attended Mass every morning. This is the story of his rise to power and the suspicious circumstances that led to his fall. In 2002, Rick Renzi stunned the political establishment by winning a wide open and hotly contested primary election, securing the Republican nomination for Congress in Arizona's heavily Democratic first district. He went on to win the general election and stunned the establishment again and again, defeating Democrat after Democrat in 2002, 2004, and 2006. For Rick Renzi, the sky was the limit. Renzi's charisma made him a Republican rock star, but he wasn't afraid to ruffle feathers or wear his aspirations on his sleeve. And his ambition made him enemies. There was a group in Arizona called Resolution Copper. It was a foreign-owned copper company. They were an international mining corporation that just, if you look at their record, uh, abused people. So when they, they came to me, the mining company came to me and said, we want this federal land, even though it's sacred to the Apaches, we want it so we can drill down and get this great copper deposit. I said, well, you know, we've got to talk to the tribe and we've got to involve a lot of other people. Immediately, they didn't like that at all. So as I began to try and protect the Apaches, they began to fight me and push back against me. A plan was developed to get Rick Renzi out of the way. They put together a plan that they called Operation Eagle. And Operation Eagle was essentially a scheme to take me out because of my opposition against their mine and my defending the Apaches. And originally what it was, was they would go to the press, the Arizona Republic, they would write stories, and they were feeding them to a reporter. When those stories didn't move me, they hired a former FBI agent named Jim Elroy. And their goal at that point became to leak information to the press and to develop a scenario that I was trying to force them to make concessions that, in order to help the Apaches that were illegal. Elroy fed the allegations of extortion to an active duty FBI agent. And they eventually landed on the desk of a politically connected prosecutor, Assistant U.S. Attorney Gary Restaino. There was a lot of money that the Restainos gave to Napolitano to many of the Democratic candidates, and he was very much a political animal. And when, once he got a hold of this case, it became a, a, a political agenda. Restaino quickly built a case against Renzi. The rumors of an investigation and impending indictment upended Arizona politics overnight. They were getting ready to indict me on about 20 felonies. And they say, we won't indict you on these 20 felonies if you'll go to prison for four years. And I immediately said, no. I don't know how many other men would have said, no, you know, I'll take this. But he was so innocent, you know, he was so innocent and he believed in his innocence so much that he was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And so I came to my attorneys and I said, no deal. Friday, District 1 Congressman Rick Renzi was indicted on 35 counts of extortion, embezzlement, money laundering, wire fraud, and insurance fraud. Renzi could be looking at fines and a prison term if convicted, but his attorney says the congressman will fight the charges until vindicated. The allegations of foul play made national headlines and rocked the Arizona political establishment to its core. You see the words corrupt and politician, you immediately believe the media, period. Though Renzi denied every charge, he declined to run for re-election and geared up for the fight of his life. I told him right to his face, I go, I'm in it for long haul. As long as it goes, we're in it. We're all in it. The prosecution of Congressman Renzi included both horrible overcharging and hiding of evidence that was favorable to the defense. We found out that they had recorded phone calls between Rick and one of his other lawyers. They wiretapped me over 1,200 times, and on the wiretap, there were never any crime, nothing. The worst thing they had on the wiretap was me using the F word. What they needed was to try to dirty Rick up with something else. And so what they ended up ultimately doing is charging an insurance case and a political corruption case together. What was remarkable is that at the end of the day, there isn't really a meaningful case here. After a long trial and a series of failed appeals, Rick Renzi was convicted and sentenced to three years in federal prison. I remember my dad coming home one day and 
Uh, he was telling all my older siblings that he was gonna have to leave. It's like, I got the kids, you know, if you go away for a long time, I'll be there. I wasn't sent to a daisy camp or a country club. I was sent to an FCI, a federal correctional institution that had a hole, that had a lockdown. I remember the first time we went and visited him and he walked out and it's, it was brutal. It's like, holy shit, you know, um, there's our dad in a, in, a, in a jumpsuit with a prison number on it. He's in jail and with a lot of prisoners and some doing some heavy crimes. And uh, this is it, this is, this is real. I got in one bad fight. I was, I was bitten uh, and had an infection for several months. I broke my hand. After three years behind bars, Rick Renzi was released from prison in January 2017. And as new details surrounding the indictment and conviction have emerged, more and more questions have been raised about the government's role, the prosecution's conduct, and the legitimacy of the entire case. There's a 500-page report that shows they intentionally committed prosecutorial misconduct. They violated the law and they violated the rules of ethics. I never misused my public office. It was, it's a fabricated lie, what they did to me. Was Rick Renzi just another corrupt politician? Or was an innocent man taken down by corporate and government interests with a political agenda? It's a uniquely Arizona story of land, ambition, corruption, and greed. The case of Congressman Renzi could very well have been political punishment. This is an important story, and um, what happened to him is, is pretty unreal. This is a crossroads in my life. I'm gonna die someday, and at least I'll die fighting the lie, fighting the corrupt people within the Department of Justice. All of it, every word of it was a lie.